Um, hi everyone, my name is Marjorie Rawl. I am the Tirana Assistant Curator at the Fitchburg Art Museum. Um, and for this Art Matters segment, I am so excited to be joined by Dr. Anthony Tirana. Dr. Tirana is a Boston area periodontist and art collector um, who is also a member of FAM's Board of Trustees. Um, over the last three years, Dr. Tirana has made major contributions to the museum's photography collection and has sponsored our curatorial fellowship, which I am personally very grateful for. Um, Dr. Tirana, thank you so much for joining me today. You're very welcome. Happy to be here. Great. Um, so to get started, I wanted to go way back to the very beginning um, and ask you, when did you begin collecting art and what compelled you to start doing that? I, I think it was more collecting period. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I always had this thing about collecting just out of curiosity. When I was very young, I collected baseball cards, probably like most people. Uh, and then I, well, the thing that really hit me or really kind of developed this whole thing was I was in Rockport, Massachusetts with my parents. I saw a Northwest Coast uh, headdress and I just fell in love with this thing. It was just amazing. And, you know, I, I obviously eight years old, I couldn't get it. My father thought I was insane, but so nothing, nothing, you know, nothing happened with it. But Many years later, I was in Vancouver at, at the expo and I saw the same headdress. Ah. Well, obviously it wasn't the same exact piece, but same style. And so that, that really kind of started me going. So there was always a period of time where I collected things to some certain degree. And then once I hit my mid twenties, it got kind of not out of control, but <laughs> close <laughs> to it. Do you remember uh, like the first piece of art you collected? Do you have kind of like a foundational memory? Was it maybe the headdress that you just mentioned? No, it was actually, I was in Arizona and I was on the edge of the Hopi reservation and I collected a Kachina doll mm. from a, a carver by the name of Ross George. And I was just, a, I, I, I've always worked with my hands. So I'm always amazed what people can do with their hands. Mm -hmm. And the Kachina dolls were fabulous. They were carved out of cottonwood, uh, more in a contemporary style rather than traditional. And that started me collecting, collecting Southwest indigenous mixture of Southwest and Northwest coast. Cause I had friends up, uh, up there. Mm -hmm. So it was really kind of a nice way to get there, visit people. But at the same time, my friend was a conservative for the museum of British Columbia. So that's a really great introduction to the whole culture. Right. Very cool. Um, so as you go on and you continue collecting art, um, I'm curious, what kind of drives you to make a decision to buy something as opposed to not buying something? Do you have this kind of, do you have particular interests um, or, you know, what kind of makes you, you know, finally decide to buy something? I buy what I love. Mm -hmm. I buy what I love. I buy what I really think that, uh, that interests me, uh, that I can kind of look further into and get knowledge of whether it's a photograph, a, a, a carving. Lately, I've been into minerals. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, but, I, but I've, I've really kind of tapered it off a lot because unfortunately you get to a point in your life where you have all of these things and you can give a tremendous amount to museums, which is my ultimate goal. Mm -hmm. But even doing that, you know, you're still left with this tremendous amount of material. And unfortunately, a lot of times your children don't want don't want it. So yeah. you know, you, you re I've really had to, as much as I don't want to, I've really had to kind of step back and say, wait a second, you know, what's the end goal here? What you know, what, what can I give this to a museum? Yeah. Or it's going to be difficult giving it to a museum because they're just not interested in that particular field. Mm -hmm. So that's, you know, in terms of what I'm collecting now, I'm very specific with photography that I think will will go into the collection. Mm, mm -hmm. I'm not buying anything uh, other than pieces I think I could eventually give to museum. Uh, and yeah, I play around with little things. I like weird stuff. I mean, mm -hmm. I, have a, I have a shrunken head, <laughs> a, bunch of, <laughs> a bunch of different things uh, that I just, I, I like being around. I mean, I sit in my office and I'm surrounded by everything and it's great because I can just look at things and play with things. And it's, it's kind of a, a, a great experience. Yeah. Um, why, you just touched on this a little bit, this is one of my questions of why is giving your collection to museums so important to you? Why do you see that as, you know, the eventual home of all of these things? 
I mean, I think a lot of the things, particularly a lot of the indigenous art belongs in the uh, public. I think the, the people, you know, need to see it. Uh, I think a museum is probably the best place because mm -hmm. it can be preserved and, and it get exposure. Uh, with photography, the goal was to create, my, my, whole, my whole history with collecting photography was to create a history of photography mm. from inception to the present day. Mm. And I originally actually started out collecting photos of children, but at the same time within the realm of the history of photography. Right. And so that's kind of where, you know, where I've been, where I'm, where I'm headed. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think for the most part right now, photography is my main emphasis. Yeah. What, what draws you to photography in particular, as opposed to painting or other types of arts? Like what is it about photography that caught your eye? Uh, you know, I love when it captures the moment. And the other thing about photography, and I'm just it's similar with, with works on paper, paintings, whatever, you get to interpret what's going on in that photograph. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times it's completely different than what the photographer intended, because I've actually bought pieces, then spoke to the photographer, and in my mind, it's one thing, and then I hear a story, and it's entirely different, which I, which I think is fantastic. Mm -hmm. you, you get to create the narrative, and I also love vintage photography. I mean, I, I collect contemporary photography, again, to stick with the progression of photography and what's happened, mm -hmm. but it, vintage black and white photography has always been my passion. I love the patina. I mm -hmm. love different materials, silver versus platinum print, how they age. Uh, so I, all of those things are really important to me. Yeah, definitely. Um, and continuing on photography. So our latest exhibition here at the museum is uh, called The Big Picture. And it was actually inspired by many photographs that you've given us um, that are just gigantic. Um, and so I think one of the biggest ones is around six by eight feet. Um, so as like a particular interest, we have many of them. What draws you to huge photographs? They're pretty rare and uncommon. I mean, maybe more, more common these days because of the technology, but still you don't see giant photographs every day. So what, um, what kind of draws you to these monumental pieces? I mean, that's actually what drew, you know, drew me to them originally. It's just the size, mm -hmm. you know, you went from contact prints, uh, black and white contact prints, enlargements, but nothing to the, the degree that, you know, some of the pieces you have on the show. Yeah, they're, they're shocking. Um, do you have any, um, I mean, they're like serious showstoppers. So I imagine if I was a collector, I feel like, you know, they, I would probably have some stories about, you know, going into galleries or seeing these works and, you know, them hitting me in the face. Do you have any like particular memories or stories associated with any of the, the big pieces in the show? Oh boy. it's uh, a good question. You know, I mean, pretty much everything I, everything I collect and everything, you know, it's not so much in particular, these large format pieces mm -hmm. that have some kind of relationship with, with the artist like with you know Ruben uh his portfolios uh I met Ruben he wasn't well known and I just liked his work mm -hmm. so I tend to gravitate towards like I said things that I really like and then if it's somebody who's known that's great I'll you know or if it's somebody who's not uh around anymore I'll collect it but if it's if it's an unknown person I like supporting the art Right. So I think I think one of the big things was doesn't necessarily have to be just particularly large images. It's just I really feel it's very important to support a lot of the artists. I think you may I think in the show you have I, don't know, I can't remember name right now, but uh, there's these large images of it's a sign that's a sign just floating in the air says Jesus saves. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Right. He was somebody that I saw, uh, fell in love with the work, and I just contacted him. Yeah. Uh, so a few, I have a few pieces like that. It's actually a couple other pieces that I'm going to give in the next uh, series of photographs that I'm donating that were something that I saw the work, called the artist up, and you know, just was, was great. So it's, it's wonderful. I think people really appreciate the fact when you acknowledge that they're doing a good job, mm -hmm. when you acknowledge that the, you know, the work is something that you would like to put in your collection. Mm -hmm. and that's been a great, a great thing.
Yeah, that's really interesting to hear too, that you reach out to the artists individually. Um, I think that's a really um, fun way to be, to meet artists and to talk about their work and not just purchase it, but like establish a connection with the artist and then with the work. Um, I think that the works that we've received, you can kind of almost feel your personality and the personality of the artist and in the collection. So it's really, um, it's really exciting to, to have that. Um, and I'm so excited that this show that we have up um, is really highlighting that right now. So my sort of last topic was, um, we touched on a little bit of sort of why you give your work to museums. And is there a particular reason why you think museums are important right now or why, as opposed to the many other places your work could end up, why you specifically um, want them in museums or at the Fitchburg Art Museum in particular? Well, I think museums are really important because uh, in the last probably, I don't know, I've, I've been just kind of throwing a number out there, 10 years, museums have really been cut off from funding. Uh, so, so if you look at a lot of the government organizations that were helping or funding museums, the money's disappeared and, and it's getting worse instead of better. Mm -hmm. Also, a lot of the uh, tax laws have changed so that people aren't encouraged to give things to museums. Mm -hmm. So I think we're reaching a point where uh, a lot of art is disappearing, it's going into private collections, never to be seen again. And I find that tragic, I find that really, you know, bothersome. I've, I've given, I had, like I said, I was collecting Native, Native uh, Indigenous works, I was giving, I gave pieces to the herd in Arizona, uh, the ICA, MFA, QD Essex, I mean all these museums that have relationships with, which is kind of nice. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, how did you get how did you get involved with um, the Fitchburg Art Museum? How did you come across? So many many years ago, and I can't remember again. I'm getting getting up there in years, so I can't remember specific <laughs> dates and things. But many years ago, I uh, had a show at the De Cordova. Okay. At that point, uh, Rachel Lafoe was the director, and Nick was a senior curator, and we did a show called Presumed Innocence, which was photog she she actually originally started that contact and me. She wanted to do a show about collecting. Mm -hmm. At that point, I had a gigantic Pez collection that I had with my son to try to get him interested in collecting. Like Pez dispensers? Pez dispensers, oh, yeah. Nice. Uh, we still have them. So I, I wanted to get something that he would be interested in collecting we could do together. So we had the Pez collection, and I had so many collections. She, was, she came to visit, and she was, I think, overwhelmed by it. <laughs> so we ended up, uh, ended up talking about photography in particular and, and the fact that I was emphasizing children uh and she did a show called presumed innocence which was photography of children everything from diane arbus twins to migrant mother uh, it was like over 100 some odd pieces and it was a we, we did a book which was great a hardcover book and that's how i got involved with nick and we kind of got to know each other uh he left went to fitchburg and there was a period of time where we weren't in contact then one day he got in touch with me and said, you know, you, I, I think you should come out. I'd hopefully you'd be interested in what we're doing. We have a really good start of a photography collection mm -hmm. and a great person in Steve, Stephen Jarecki. Yep. So it came out, Stephen laid out a series of photographs that you had originally in the collection. And I was really, really amazed and really blown away by the, the some of the early vintage stuff, great pieces, really thoughtful collecting. And I said, you know what? This is a place where I can make a difference. If I give it to another big museum, whether MFA was talking, it was talking to them, uh, ICA, I've given a lot of photographs to. I think here I could really make a difference, and the ultimate goal would be to try to create a depository of photography, mm -hmm. again history of photography, and it would help the museum, but also really make me just feel great about having did this. Absolutely, yeah. I think. Um, making a difference is definitely um, what you're doing here. So yeah, we definitely appreciate it. Um, and I have kind of a maybe silly logistical question that I think maybe folks would be interested in. Where do you keep all of it? Can, do you have enough room in your house to store your collection? Do you have different storage locations? <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> I never really had enough room in my heart in the house because I just keep doing it. I have actually <laughs> have a 3,000 square foot uh, storage facility. Oh my gosh. All right. And I literally keep everything from glass, pens, mm -hmm. minerals, photography, 
uh, indigenous art, Pez. Mm -hmm. So it's pretty, you know, Nick, Nick could tell you, there's a kind of a menagerie. At some point you should come down and see it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Is, um, do, are you in charge of organizing it and keeping track of it? Or do you have someone that helps you do that? Uh, I have somebody who helps, helps me. I've had somebody actually for years, I had a uh, cur uh, curator who took care of things, cataloging things, mm -hmm. making sure we had everything put where it was and insured. Uh, right now, since I've been deaccessioning, just you know, giving away a lot of pieces, I've kind of done, done it on my own. Mm -hmm. I find that people, <clears throat> especially museums, respond much better if I have direct contact with them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and this might be an unfair question that you can't answer, but do you have a favorite piece of art that you've ever collected or, you know, a favorite focus of your collection? Since it sounds like you have many different focuses or areas of focus. So do you have like a piece that's near and dear to you that you could talk about? Well, the first thing that comes to mind is by uh, an artist by the name of uh, John Dugdale. He is legally blind because he, has, he uh, is uh, HIV. And he did a photograph. Most of his photographs were uh, cyanotypes. He mm -hmm. did a platinum print of he's in his mother's arms. She has long gray hair. He's holding her. His eyes are closed. And she's holding him with, his, with, him with his, her head resting on his head. And it's the most beautiful photograph. I, you know, in terms of rarity, rare because it's the, you know, I think it's the only platinum print, but not specifically, you know, costly, whatever, but I've had it in my bedroom every place I've been. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's still in my bedroom now. Yeah. <laughs> so that, that's really, I can't explain why it's just, it's just this photograph that really has dramatic impact on me. Mm -hmm. you know, it's so a look, the look of knowing his history. Mm -hmm. so. Absolutely. Very cool. Well, Dr. Trana, that um, covers all of my questions. Um, I want to thank you again for joining us today and for all you do for um, the Fitchburg Art Museum. And um, I am sure that um, our audience will enjoy. So um, thanks for um, being here today. Okay. Take care. Bye-bye, Marjorie. Bye-bye.